What is up you guys, Matt McGadam I'm here, your truck editor at Drive Line with another episode of Chasing Dust. This time from my kitchen. <laughs> First time I'm doing a video in here, so yeah, take a look around. Pretty basic kitchen, sink, microwave, stove, all that stuff. Today's episode is gonna be about a bunch of different things because I have received a bunch of different parts for two separate projects that I'm working on. We're gonna go over some of the things that I've got in the mail. It's kind of been like Christmas in June around here lately. There's been a, a brown box in front of my door every day for the last couple of weeks now and they're starting to kind of accumulate here in my living room. And uh, I wanna start opening this stuff up and going through some of these parts for these two different builds. First one is my 91 Toyota pickup, Scarlet, the four-wheel drive pre-runner. And the second one is the camper van. So you guys have kind of been following along. If you've been following along on the episodes, you've been hearing bits and pieces about these two builds. Uh, and I'm really, really happy to say that things are starting to move on both of these. I've actually started working on both of them. Um, and I'll give you guys a little bit of an update on what I've done so far and what's to come. So stick around. We're gonna dive right into it as soon as we get back. All right, so first things first, we're gonna focus on one build at a time. We're gonna talk about the Toyota first. So Scarlet is my 91 Toyota pickup. So it's currently got the three liter V6 in there, which is arguably the worst Toyota motor ever made. And it's time for an upgrade. It's got a pretty bad misfire and it's not worth fixing with 240,000 miles on it. So what I did was I decided to buy a 3.4 liter V6 out of a newer Tacoma. The reason I did that was because the swap to a 3.4 liter on that 91 Toyota pickup is relatively easy. Um, it's not very hard to do. And with that said, there are some parts that you need to make it work. Uh, a lot of people source them themselves, they build them, or you can get them from a company that sells you the swap parts. So I'm gonna put up a link right over here to another video that I did that's gonna outline exactly the stuff that you have to do to get this motor to drop into this truck. So since then, making that video, I've received a lot of the parts needed to make this work. And I wanna show them to you guys right here. So right in front of me here, I've got two boxes and they're full of parts, both of them very heavy, and they're from a company called Off-Road Solutions, ORS. And they specialize in 3.4 liter engine swaps for Toyota pickup trucks. These guys know what they're talking about. They know what they're doing. If you need to swap your engine, they have everything that you need to do it. I mean, everything from the wiring harness to the exhaust to all the OEM parts that you need to switch out. I mean, they just have a solution for everything, which is very aptly named why they call themselves off-road solutions. They have the solution. So. Let's get into some of the parts that I ordered from them and talk about why they're needed. First one is gonna be the exhaust. So here we have a crossover pipe, very nice, coated, super slick. I mean, just looks like a performance part right off the bat. And what this does is it converts the exhaust to route through the driver's side, and this goes behind the engine, um, whereas on the 3.4 liter, it does converge the collector on the passenger side on this end. However, for the 3.4 to drop into the Toyota pickup, it's gotta be back on the stock side that it is on the three liter. So this converts that over. Of course, that comes with a new set of headers. And it looks like a little trombone. This one's in tune. <laughs> so this is a header right here, and there's the other side still in the box. Very nicely built. The flanges are super nice. Everything's welded together and coated. I'm really excited to run these on the truck. It's gonna be a lot better than the factory exhaust that's on there now. All right, now that the exhaust is out of the way, we're gonna move on to the second box here, which has quite a few more parts in it, and I'm gonna go through these really quickly. Right here, we've got, looks like an oil pan kit, and this is a dipstick, and it's got uh, some hardware here for the oil pan. And what, it, what you need to do is uh, actually use the three liter oil pan on the 3.4, and uh, it does need to be adapted to fit the new motor. So it comes with a new dipstick, a new dipstick tube, a new pickup, um, you know, all that stuff that you need to get the oil to the correct spots of the motor. It's got all the hardware in there too. Very nice, 
and uh, it's all parts that you can get from Toyota. Again, here we have a set of cooling hoses. Uh, this is all going to be for the radiator system and the heater. So obviously when you put a new radiator and a new motor in, you're going to have to move some of the uh, hoses around. So this solves that problem for you. Very cool. There's an extra flange and some bolts here. These are for the headers also to create your own exhaust as you go back um, to the back of the truck. So this will assist in that and actually bolting the headers to the engine. I'll actually put that here in the exhaust box. <clears throat> right here we have a fuel line with a fuel union on it. And while I didn't need to replace the line because mine is still there and you can reuse the factory one for the 3.4 liter, I did want to get a new line because mine was pretty old and starting to get a little bit brittle. So I figured why not get this fuel line. What I didn't know when I was ordering it is that it actually comes with AN fittings. Very nice, you know, just the quality you can expect from a company like ORS. There's the fitting here that goes to the fuel rail and then obviously to your injectors. And this goes to the uh, line coming from the tank. So really cool, really nice line here, cut to length. In here we have a pulley. This is for the, uh, I believe it's the idler pulley for the um, timing belt. So that's really nice to have because those pulleys tend to go bad after a while. And it of course uh, comes with a bearing in there too. And again, guys, these are all factory, you know, Toyota genuine parts. None of this is aftermarket stuff except for the clutch, which I'll go over here. This is a uh, clutch hose. This is a new clutch hose and a bracket for it that needs to be moved over when you install the 3.4 liter. Um, you obviously can use the same transmission that's in the truck now with that motor because they did go together in the Tacoma. However, uh, there is a different clutch bracket for the hose and that keeps it out of the way and tucked up nicely. So they make the bracket and they sell the new hose here. I just didn't want to mess around with the old hose. They were also able to source a computer that is going to work for my engine. So this is a 2001 Tacoma 3.4 liter manual transmission with four wheel drive. Uh, very cool because I've been searching for this exact computer here for a while. Um, and it's going to go great with my motor, which is a 97. However, it will work with this computer and the wiring harness that I, I'm going to talk about here in a minute. Next up here, we have a Toyota Reman clutch disc. So as you can see here, I try to open this up one handed. There's a clutch disc right here, brand new. Well, I guess Reman, but it's new. Um, my clutch is starting to go out on the Toyota. So I figured what better time to change it than while the engine's out. And turns out it was a good move. Okay, next up here, we have a heavy box. This is the clutch cover. So I'm gonna try to open this guy up here. Again, one handed, I'm sorry, I'm also holding a camera. But you guys know what a clutch cover looks like. I mean, it's nothing special. Pretty small for the V6, but there it is. And last but certainly not least is a new flywheel. The motor that I have now is an automatic 3.4 liter. And obviously I have a manual transmission. So this is the new flywheel that's gonna go in the engine. And uh, it does come with eight new flywheel bolts. So I can get this all lined up. And with uh, the new clutch, should be really nice. So yeah, that was a lot of parts that I got. I'm still waiting on two pieces uh, to start getting this motor swap underway. The first is the wiring harness from ORS. Now, I just mentioned Off-Road Solutions and what they do and what they sell. One of the coolest items that they actually have is a fully built wiring harness that is pre-made to replace your engine harness on the 3.4 liter, the new motor, that plugs into the factory Tacoma computer that you get with your engine, or in this case, the one that I ordered from them, and it plugs into your body harness on the truck. So it replaces all the wiring, whereas you guys know better than me. On a 20 year old truck, you try to take some of those wiring harness clips off and they just, the plastic is brittle, it just breaks right off. So these guys have actually developed a brand new harness that plugs directly into the body harness on the 91. So it replaces everything from there to the computer, to the engine, and you don't have to do any more wiring on your own. It's all ready to go. 
I mean, it does not get any easier than that. So that's why I went with those guys for the wiring harness because it's just so simple. You just basically plug everything in where it needs to go and tuck all the wires in and you're ready to run. So they obviously send me all the other stuff ahead of time so I can get started on it. And then the harness will be the last piece to the puzzle of the engine itself. And then there's one more part that I'm missing that I'm still waiting on and that's new motor mounts from Solid Off-Road who makes a fabricated motor mount that has a bushing in there. It's made for off-road use. And man, those things are a life changer. I can't wait to put those on because I've been battling motor mount problems with this engine ever since I got this truck. They keep breaking. That's actually what led to the first downfall of this truck was the motor mount broke and it caused the fan to bind up and for it to overheat. So it actually broke the oil filter too because the engine had fell into the chassis and it lost all the oil and it lost all the coolant. And that's really, I think, what contributed to that initial um, misfire situation that I'm having right now. I think there's a problem with something inside the engine. So anyways, if I had those mounts, I probably would still have a running truck, but you know, I'm not too upset about it because I'm putting a much better engine in there. And that brings us to my next build, which is the 99 Ford E350 cargo van, which I am currently in the process of converting into a camper van. My version of this van is going to be a tow vehicle, which is why I got a 7.3 liter diesel E350. It can tow your house. Uh, so I got that truck to start off with as a cargo van because it's got nothing in it. I can just start building away the inside the way I want. But one of the things that was really struggling to come up with was the suspension on this van. Um, how was I going to do it? Was I going to go with a two-wheel drive lift? Because they don't come four-wheel drive. You have to actually make them four-wheel drive yourself. So do I just stick with two-wheel drive and lift it? Or do I do a four-wheel drive swap? If so, how do I do it? Do I do a solid axle? Do I do a twin traction beam? There was options on the table. But one night I was uh, scrolling through Facebook Marketplace and something nudged me in the direction of a solid axle swap. I saw a uh, Quigley's conversion. If you guys don't know about Quigley's vans, they've been doing four-wheel drive conversions on Ford vans for I think 20 or 30 years now. And uh, they had the entire kit for sale including the Dana 50 front axle, the springs, the shocks, the control arms, all the bracketry, everything, the brakes, hubs. I mean, it was a complete kit and I couldn't pass the offer up. So I bought that kit and last weekend we started putting it on the van. So we cut everything off underneath the front end, started putting the axle under there and it's getting done. I don't want to show it to you guys quite yet till it's finished, but just so you know, that's the direction that this van project is heading. It's going to be a four wheel drive, 7.3 liter diesel van and it's gonna have a roof rack up there. The interior is gonna be built out to live and work out of for a couple of days whenever I go to these events. A lot of really cool stuff happening. But, you know, besides the functionality, I wanted to have a little bit of, you know, more aesthetic upgrades as well. So what I did was I actually ordered a conversion uh, clip for the front end to convert it from a 99 front end to the 08 and up front end. If you guys want to see what that looks like, you can just Google 2008 E350 or Econoline van. You can see that it's got a more modern front end look to it. So I got all the parts needed to convert that. Um, I've got some tow mirrors here that I'm going to show you in a minute because the mirrors that are on there absolutely suck, even for normal driving. For towing, they're going to be horrible. So I got some tow mirrors off a newer van. Essentially, this thing is going to look like a newer model E350 van, but it's going to have that reliability and the grunt of that old 7.3 liter power stroke in it. And it'll be able to tow my Toyota behind it and I can live out of it for a couple of days if I need to, whatever I need. The sky is the limit when it comes to building these things and I can't wait to dive into the interior. Now, with all that said, the 7.3 liter is an incredibly reliable diesel engine. We know this from all the articles we put out on Driving Line. I personally own probably six different trucks that have the 7.3. This is my first van with the 7.3 but we all know that they're just workhorse engines. However, they do lack in the performance department. So they only make about 190 horsepower from the factory, which is nothing for a big van like that. Of course, the torque number is much higher. It's about 350 pounds of torque. Um, but again, there's a lot of room for improvement, right? So one of the first things people will do to a 7.3 liter vehicle, be it a truck or a van, is to start you know, unrestricting some of the factory components. And of course, one of the first things everyone does is puts an exhaust system on it. What that does for you on a diesel truck is it unrestricts the flow of the exhaust. And what that can help you do is clear out 
those hot gases from your turbocharger quicker than if you had a catalytic converter and a muffler and all that other stuff under there. Now my van is a 99, which means that it does not have a catalytic converter under it from the factory, but it does have a giant muffler underneath it. And it's very much suppressed from the factory. So I went online and I hooked up with Diamond Eye Performance. They sell amazing diesel exhaust systems, aluminized, stainless steel, whatever you need. They have all this really cool stuff and they are specialized in diesel exhaust. So Diamond Eye actually is the only company out there who makes a kit for the vans. They actually make a system that is specific to the van chassis, which is different from the Ford truck chassis. So of course, naturally, this was the kit that I needed to order. As you guys can see here, here's the big Diamond Eye box. I'm gonna try, try to get this cover off so you guys can see what the components come with. But just so you know, before we get into it, this is a four inch diameter turbo back system, which means that it starts at the turbo flange itself, and it's a four inch system all the way back to the tailpipe. So much less restrictive than the three inch exhaust that comes on their factory. I can't wait to get this on there and really start to hear the difference in sound from the 7.3 and the lower EGTs, which is exhaust gas temperature, and hopefully a little bit more power out of it too. All right, well here it is in all of its glory, four inch diameter, man, that is just ginormous. Uh, so this is the full kit. It's uh, the downpipe, which I believe is this piece right here. Uh, this may be the ax over axle tube, actually. I may be incorrect there. I think that's the end of the downpipe right there. Downpipe tube, this one I ordered without the muffler, so you can see here that their system does uh, include a muffler in it as well if you want it. But I got mine with a straight pipe. I just prefer the louder exhaust noise and you can hear the turbo a little bit louder too. So very cool, it comes with all the clamps here. Um, the clamps have hangers on them, so they're hanger clamps basically. Um, aluminized tubing, I don't really need to worry about rust here in California, so that's nice. Uh, but yeah, it's just all kind of pieces together and I can't wait to get this Diamond Eye four inch turbo back on the van because it's gonna sound so much cooler, it's gonna run cooler on the EGTs and it is going to help with performance. Um, I am also gonna be doing a tuner on there and a gauge readout so I can find out, you know, what all my parameters and all the numbers and the, the temperatures are at. Um, so stay tuned for that to come on the van still. And this is gonna be installed, hopefully, within the next couple of days. I've just gotta get under there and take the factory stuff out with a Sawzall and start piecing this beast together. So there you guys go. I hope that was a cool little update for you guys on the two different builds that I'm working on right now. I know that we didn't actually see any of the trucks this time because they're kind of both halfway put together, but I'm gonna do a little bit of video for you guys here in the next couple of weeks of us actually putting some of these parts together and putting the engine in the Toyota and the exhaust and all the other four wheel drive components that are going on the van so that you guys can see the progress as it's happening. I'm really excited to get both of these builds on the road. As you can imagine, I've been without an off-road vehicle for quite some time now, and it's kind of cool that it's all coming together at one time here. Um, I got a few more boxes to wait for in the mail, and as soon as those come in, we're gonna start tearing into both of these trucks, and you can be sure to see the progress on Chasing Dust right here on Driving Lines YouTube channel. So of course, if you guys don't already subscribe to us, please do. Be sure you hit that bell icon. No, smash that bell icon so you guys can get all the notifications every time we upload a new video. We have a couple of more vlog series that are up and running right now. We've got Built to Wander with Colin Coates, really cool Jeep content. If you guys are into that stuff, Jeep is awesome. He does a lot of really cool stuff on there. And then we've also got Extra Good with Kristen Klein, who's our chief editor, and she talks to you guys, to you guys about some of the processes and things of building classic cars, and, and she deals with a lot of the older really cool old school stuff. So if you guys are into that, please do subscribe to us and I will catch you guys on the next Chasing Dust. Again, this is your truck editor at Driving Line, Matt McAdam, AKA Desert Chief. I'll see you guys on the next one.